in the 100 and 200 meter dashes, it was Rayanne Thompson of Fall City who crossed the finish line first, earning her the title of fastest girl in Class B. Ten seconds left, and Sacred Heart will win its fourth straight Class D crown in basketball. Two second jumper still short by Hildreth, and that will do it. Had a chance for what might have been a short two points, but folks, the clock is down to three seconds. Inbound the pass. We'll try a long one here. It uh, shot is on the way, doesn't go. There's the ball game. The Sacred Heart Irish are the 2020 Class D2 state basketball champions by posting a 45 to 33 win over the previously undefeated St. Francis Flyers. Stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes with the postgame show on Sunny 101.3. I have lived in a big city. We, when I graduated college in 2006, we went to Omaha and I taught at Millard West and I was one of 22 math teachers. And so it's just a real big culture shock, but I did have quite a bit of family that lived in Omaha. So it wasn't like we were in Omaha by ourselves, but my work was about 20 blocks from my house and sometimes it would take 25 to 30 minutes. So just that traffic, the hustle and bustle just wasn't for me. Um, I do love going to Omaha to shop, see friends, but I like just the small, soft, like slower pace here in Fall City. Yes, the biggest town I've ever lived in is Fall City. I um, went to Prue College after high school um, for a year and a half, I was on full, full scholarship, but I ran into your grandpa Fink when I was 16 and he was 20, and uh, he wouldn't give up. And we fell in love, and so I quit uh, college and, and was married soon afterwards. And. Uh, I've lived at Falls City since 1958. Yeah, so uh, I grew up in Falls City, Nebraska. Um, born and raised here. Uh, after graduation, I went to Lincoln. I lived in Lincoln for eight years, uh, four of it being in college. Uh, and three and a half, four years after, after college, I, I took a job there in Lincoln. Uh, worked in Lincoln. I owned a home in Lincoln and just decided that, you know, Falls City it was, was home. Uh, you know, I missed Fall City, uh, and then the other side of it was is the family business back home was 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 ready for me, and I was ready for it after a few years in Lincoln. So it was a it had a huge family atmosphere. So my class, we, I graduated with eighteen people, and they were like family to me. We fought like brothers and sisters, that's for sure. Um, but I still have friendships through there to this day that I think are going to last quite a while and I think that's definitely the best thing. Growing up in Fall City it was a big family. Um, I worked at Sunmar in high school and I felt like I knew everyone. Um, everyone knew me. If I needed something I knew I could ask someone. Um, but it's just a big heartfelt community. If we had some losses along the way and that's when you really knew like how the community was shaped um, together. You know, in Omaha, you might have this metro area, and you might have, you know, Millard or Papillion or whatnot, where it's a smaller community amongst a, a larger metro area. That it, you have a little bit of that, but in a small town, it is a hundred percent that. Like it, the, you see these people when you go out to, to eat dinner, you see these people when you go to the swimming pool, you see these people when in everything that you do. So you recognize. Um, you know, their occupations. You, you find out, okay, that baseball coach is a nurse. That baseball coach is a, a barber downtown. And so it's, it's really cool to see how it all mixes together and, and how people take care of people. You know, when somebody's sick, their yard gets mowed. Nobody knows who mows their yard. Somebody just goes and does it. Um, you know, when, when people 
get cancer, there's no matter what anymore, there's a benefit for it. Um, it's just people don't always need it or ask for it. It's just taking care of people. Memories of, of coming to, uh, to Falls City was a town of um, five, th five to 6,000, I think. It has since shrunk a lot um, due to the uh, number of closed businesses. And uh, people moved away and moved to bigger adventures. At the time, there were many grocery stores and, and several clothing stores, and, and my favorite was pennies because I could get the kids' clothes and Ray's <clears throat> favorite jeans, and I could buy fabric there. And the people were very uh, uh, nice to, uh, to us and made us feel like family. I don't really know what it is about small towns that makes people more personable they just I think we see each other more often we we go to the same restaurants there's just a few restaurants to choose from so we see each other at these restaurants we always go to we see each other at the one grocery store we have in town it's just since it's smaller we have less options and we're around these people more so they get to know us better there's there's definitely positive and negatives about people knowing all your business in a small town because there's some things you want to keep to yourself that there's just it's not possible but in the long run I think people are just more caring because of it. Full well, City has taught me to take care of my neighbor as I would like to be taken care of you know we learned that in church um, but it's also a small town mentality um, you know, we all kind of take care of each other that way. Is that if we can all volunteer in different areas and utilize our expertise and our, our gifts um, that we've been given, then we can help each other. And in a small town, you see that more because you see the same people. And in a larger city, I think some of that's lost uh, because you don't know the person who's coaching your kid's t-ball team. You don't see the t-ball the coach at church on Sunday morning. You don't see the t-ball the coach downtown during the lighted Christmas parade when Santa comes to town. But in a small town, you see these people over and over, and you recognize, even if, even if you don't know them at a personal level, you know of them, and you know, oh, that guy over there, he did this, and his wife does this. You know what each person does, and I think it holds people more accountable, and uh, nobody does it for the recognition, but they do it because they realize they're doing their part of the small town. I think that the biggest thing I was taught from living in Fall City is that kindness is appreciated everywhere. So no matter if it's just as simple as holding a door open for someone or helping someone with their groceries, kindness is just something that people are going to remember and it can make their day better. And I think that that's something we were taught to volunteer and work our hardest for people, even if it's not benefiting us directly. Everything's changing. You know, I'm 37 now, so over the last 35 years, yeah, Fall City's definitely changed. Um, but there's still a lot of things that are still the same. We still have a lot of the same values. We still have a lot of the same issues and problems. There is more diversity today than what I believe when I grew up, but we still have a very low percentage of that. Uh, you know, that's that's something that hopefully we can help and change in the future. Uh, the hospital has talked about bringing, you know, people from, you know, different ethnicity backgrounds back into the, you know, bringing them in to be nurses because they have such a shortage of nurses. I've looked at that saying, hey, there's people from these countries that would love to be diesel mechanics. You know, if the wife comes in and wants to be a nurse at the hospital, be in the medical profession, what if the husband comes in and is a diesel mechanic for me? So there's there's definitely a need for that. And if we're going to grow as a community and change and evolve, that's something that needs to happen. We need to be open to that and, and look at all opportunities to bring people to our community and make Fall City a, a prosperous place for these people. The new library and the swimming pool are all, I think, all assets when people look around 
and having the choice of two school systems, the public and the parochial, to attend, I think are assets to, to, to why people might want to come to Fall City. It's just great to see the growth and people willing to put in the hard work to make Fall City what it is. Um, for our youth and for even our elderly, like um, we do a Christmas caroling every year, and we went, we visited shut-ins last year and dropped off um, hot cocoa and just sang a song while they stayed inside. And um, just to see how our younger generation is taking care of the older generation and vice versa, I think it's it's just a great place to live and raise your family. I'm in charge of the, our church, St. Peter and Paul Bible School. Last year we had 110 kids, um, and the most exciting thing was we had over 35 junior high and high school kids helping. And so the fact that they were willing to give up a week out of their summer to teach kids about God and just show their love for Jesus is really special to me. And it was a community-wide event. It wasn't just Sacred Heart. We had um, some high school kids from both schools and some younger kids from both schools. And some kids actually come back and stay with their grandparents and attend the Bible school. So I think it's a great event for our community. I think that Fall City has a bright future because I know a few people that want to go back and they're in college right now, they're exploring their careers and they want to go back and I know that those people will make the town a better place and I can see myself personally going back maybe one day living in the area but I think with the way the world is changing and the amount of remote job options there are a lot of that could start to change and that could change kids' minds in wanting to leave. As a parent raising four children in Fall City I think it's so important to know who my kids are friends with and just it really does take a village to raise a family and I appreciate the support of the teachers and other parents just helping me make my kids be who they are. Oftentimes when students graduate they say they're leaving, they're never coming back and I just really want to encourage our youth to have an open heart and you don't you don't have to make up your decision what you're going to do with the rest of your life. But just when you go to college, you start to have a family, just really consider Fall City as an option because our community needs people to come back and to be good citizens and help th Fall City thrive. And I think, um, I never said I was coming back to Fall City, but um, I never said I wasn't coming back. And so I think it's just a great place to raise a family and we are church and our, you know, the schools in the town and the summer rec and there's just a lot of different um, things going on in our community that we have to offer for families. So just have an open heart and I know people welcome, welcome you back with open arms, you know.